Hi, and welcome to the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. Hi, and welcome to the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. This show explores people and their unique story of cooking. It's going to be a historical journey as well as a culinary experience. Each week we're going to look at a different group of people, their story of cooking, and how you can create that in your own home. You don't have to be a four-star chef, but you can have an interest in history and a love of cooking, and you can create this meal in your own home. This week we're going to look at a jousting meal. I wanted to do this show because in Virginia every year, in a place called Natural Chimneys, um, also in the Shenandoah Valley, uh, they hold an annual jousting tournament. They actually hold two annual jousting tournaments. And the second one that they have in August is actually the longest continuously running sporting event in America, longer than the World Series or the Kentucky Derby. So I wanted, I wanted to you know, talk about jousting and what you would traditionally eat after a jousting tournament and of course um, it's known as the sport of kings so you would have very elaborate brunches and that kind of thing after a jousting tournament. Um, like I said before it takes the jousting tournament takes place in Virginia uh, natural chimneys near Mount Solon and it's actually where my mother grew up and in fact um, I don't know if this tra tradition still continues uh, at the jousting tournament but they used to crown a princess every year for the jousting tournament so I have pictures from my mother um, way back in, well I won't say the date because that will embarrass my mother, but way back in the day, um, pictures of her being crowned as the jousting princess. So it's a tradition in my family as well. Alright, so the first thing we're going to make is a pork pie, which is a very classic medieval dish to make. We're going to start with a little oil in the pan, not much because this is pork and pork has a lot of fat. So we're going to brown the pork for our filling. So Natural Chimneys, uh, where this, the tournament takes place, is actually, I would say, one of the greatest natural wonders of the world. It, um, it actually looks like chimney stacks. It's made of limestone um, that has been created over 500 million years during the Paleozoic era when the um, natural chimneys were actually, or the area was actually covered in water, limestone accumulated and formed these pillars, these natural chimneys, just tall stone limestone pillars. I think they stand about 120 feet above ground, so they're pretty cool. And today, in addition to having the two jousting tournaments, um, it's also a place where you can camp. It's a park where you can camp out. And I think they even, allow people that want to be jousters to practice at their jousting uh, tournament arena. Okay, so we're just gonna brown this. So this is a really simple meal to make and very uh, classic medieval kind of meal. Back in the day they weren't very good at making pie crust like we are now nowadays and it was actually always kind of quite tough. So it would be common for the upper class to just eat the filling and give the uh, pie dough to their help. All right, it's not taking too long. A little browner. Let go for a second. Okay, in addition to the pork, we're also going to add some other ingredients. Now you would think pork pie would be an only savory kind of dish, but it actually is kind of sweet. It's got um, dried fruit and honey in it as well. So for the filling, we're going to add six egg yolks. Grated ginger, two teaspoons. One third um, cup of honey. So you can see it's pretty sweet. One 
third cup of honey, half a cup of currants, dates, one half a cup of chopped dates. And I guess you could use any dried fruit that you really that you enjoy, and um, salt. And then also a little pepper. About a fourth teaspoon of pepper. So mix that all together. And it's gonna be added to your pork. Okay. Pork's looking close. That's that's good enough. It's, if there's still little bits that are undercooked, that's okay, because you're going to bake this as well. So you want to take that off the heat and let it cool for a second. While that's cooling, I'm going to assemble my pie crust here. I did not make my own pie crust, uh, but you are welcome to do so at home. I have store-bought pie crust, and that's just as fine. So I'm going to place the bottom pie crust in the pan. It's cool enough. Um, and then we're going to strain the pork as much as possible. You don't want a lot of fat in your dish. Into our current egg honey mixture over here. And the reason why you wouldn't want it to be too hot when you put this in here because you don't want the eggs to cook immediately. Egg yolks. It should be okay. Okay. Pork goes in. Toss that around. And then you just pour it into your pie crust. Maybe I should have made my own pie crust. It's alright. If it comes apart, it's pliable, so just push it back together. This is a bit evil pie crust. It's gonna be a little rustic. Okay, here we go. Into the pie crust. Spread it around. And if you go to like medieval fairs, they have those all over the place in the United States. You always see those huge turkey legs, and you always see little the little versions of the pork pies. And then top your pie with your other pie crust. So natural chimneys was my mom's like backyard. So she got to go to a lot of jousting tournaments growing up. I unfortunately have never actually been, but I would like to go. They don't have the man-to-man -man combat. They just do the, um, the lance with the rings part of the jousting tournament. A little less violent. So I'm just kind of crimping the edges so it doesn't look, so it looks pretty, prettier. Just roll and crimp with your two fingers. You can do this any way you like. I wouldn't suggest doing the lattice work on it, but you can do your edges any way you like. Some people just use a fork, which is actually easier. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we're just gonna cut some slits in it so it can vent while it's cooking. The other thing you can do to make it look even prettier is just a light egg wash on the top. Um, you don't have to, but we'll do a little hole in the middle. It looks pretty. Okay, so this is gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes. The inside's actually almost all the way cooked except for the egg yolks. Uh, you're really just looking to get the crust nice and brown. The inside will be cooked once that happens because again, it's, it's almost all the way cooked anyway. I'm gonna pop the pie in the oven at 350 degrees for 35 minutes. I'm gonna get this area cleaned up. When we come back, we'll make our roasted radishes. Hi, and welcome back. We're going to make our roasted radish dish now. Very simple again. You're gonna start with radishes. Uh, cut in half. It's probably the easiest way to do it. And you're going to toss them in a little olive oil. It's 
So jousting is known as the sport of kings, and I think everybody has this, today people have this romantic notion of what jousting was, like the knight riding into glory and taking the fair maiden's hand. Um, in fact, it wasn't very romantic at all. It was very violent, uh, violent sport, especially the man-to-man -man combat that took place. Jousting actually started in France with a man named Pirelli, and then it spread to Germany and other parts of Europe as well, again in the 10 to 12, 10 to 12th centuries. Okay, so we're gonna take these radishes that have been tossed in the olive oil and spread them out on a baking dish. Spread them out so they cook evenly. And we're gonna pop them in a 450 degree oven for about 18 minutes. Okay. Okay, that's in the oven. So now we're gonna start on our sauce for the top of the radishes when they come out. And it's very simple sauce. Simple is the key word in this show today. We are gonna make a brown butter sauce. And I love brown butter. Um, sometimes it's, it can be kind of hard to make just because it browns really quickly, but it smells and tastes like hazelnuts when it's brown. So good. All right. So back when jousting was occurring in the Middle Ages, they, Europe was under a feudal system and jousting and being a knight was actually an occupation more than entertainment. Rich landowners under the feudal system were required to produce knights for wartime. So jousting actually started as, not as entertainment, it started as a way for knights to get military practice and hands-on experience. And oftentimes, a peaceful jousting tournament would turn into a bloody battle to the death. Again, not very romantic. It's pretty violent. Okay. Let that go for, it shouldn't take too long. You don't want it to burn, but you do want to see little brown bits in the bottom. And then to that, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little salt, and it'll actually help it brown too. But being a knight was actually something that a lot of young boys wanted to, wanted to be um, when they grew up, because it was actually a good way for you to gain fame and wealth if you were in the peasant class and under the feudal system. So they wanted to make a name for themselves, and being a knight, you could do that quickly. Okay. So when I, what I did not mention earlier, when I cut my radishes, I saved the green parts, and this will actually go on the top at the end after we sprinkle the sauce over the roasted radishes. We'll sprinkle the green parts of the radishes over top as a garnish, but we'll do that at the end. The green parts of radishes are also really good, just sauteed on their own. Just keep the pan moving. In French, this is called a broil noisette, and noisette actually stands for hazelnut in French, so usually brown butter tastes like hazelnut. Swirl it. It's getting there, you can see it's getting darker. Okay. And when you're ready to stop the cooking, you want to put something cold in it. We're going to use a little lemon juice because that goes really well with radishes. Mm, I love the smell of brown butter. Okay. When you got it to about where you want it, this is looking pretty good. Remove it from the heat and stop the cooking with a little lemon juice. And when you, when you go to stop the cooking, it'll actually still brown a little bit more. So you want to get it on, when it's on the heat, you want to get it to the point where it's almost done and then take it off. All right, the sauce looks great. We're gonna top the roasted radishes with the brown butter sauce and then garnish them with the radish greens. I'm gonna get this area cleaned up and when we come back, we'll make our fig tarts. Okay, we're back and we have everything set up to make our fig tarts. The important ingredient in fig tarts are fresh figs. So we have some of those already diced up for us, but we're gonna dice up some more so you can see how it's done. Not very complicated. 
Okay. You want to mince them up pretty finely. Um, a food processor would work just as well. It might even be easier. This was eight ounces of figs originally. Need more space. Just get them as fine as you can. So, like I was saying earlier, you know, jousting was pretty uh, barbaric and violent, but eventually, around 1066, it turned into more of a formal event, and that's because nobles started participating as knights. So it wasn't quite as uh, violent as the previous had previously been. Um, in fact, the hand-to-hand -hand combat actually stopped around that time, too, because the nobles didn't want to die. So that's when it kind of turned into the whole, what we think of as the running of the rings, where the two horse, the, the two knights have, on the horse have the lance and they try to put the lance through the ring, which is actually pretty complicated. It's easier to uh, hit a man with a lance than it is to fit a lance through a ring. So it became more of, instead of like a military exercise, it became more of an entertainment type of thing. So that, that definitely changed the way of jousting. Um, in fact, around that same time, nobles would actually have to get a royal permit to issue challenges to other rich nobles, rich landowners um, for a jousting tournament. And then the whole process of finding the best knight would commence, and the, the knight that was the best would go to the highest bidder, so it's like sports free agency nowadays. Um, in fact, it turned into such a big sporting event that they started having heralds that would actually introduce the knight with poems and song and dance or whatever, basically try to get the crowd behind, behind their knight that was fighting. Okay, so we have our minced figs. We're going to add our other ingredients now. Just go ahead and put these in here. Okay. We have what's called powder forte, which is really common um, in medieval cooking. Uh, I don't think you can buy it now, but you can make it. It's really easy. It's one part, no, sorry, two parts cinnamon, one part pepper, one part mace, one part clove, and one part ginger. Put that in there. And then we have a pinch of saffron, powdered saffron. And this is three tablespoons of honey. We're only, only going to use half of this because the rest is going, rest of the honey is going to be brushed on top of the figs when they're done. Okay. I'm going to mix all and a pinch of salt. Mix all of that together, and this is our filling for our tarts. So I said earlier that nobles started participating in jousting because they wanted the fame and glory as well. So it kind of changed again from a military exercise to entertainment. So hand-to-hand -hand combat really died off when a king died. King Henry of France's death in the jousting tournament was actually prophesied by Nostradamus himself, which is pretty interesting. Nostradamus actually predicted the death of King Henry of France in 1559. Um, King Henry VIII of England also got involved in jousting and he suffered a tremendous injury that actually plagued him the rest of his life and some people even said was part of the cause of him dying. So they definitely made it a little safer after the nobles started dying off. Okay, so we have our mixture. Now we're going to make our tarts. Again, I'm going to use already store-bought pastry dough. You can make your own you wish. And these are going to kind of look like raviolis. All right, so you just take a little bit, pop it, center. Just do a few. Okay. Take your makeshift cookie cutter out of a mason jar top, which works just as well. Cut out little rings. There we 
we go. I'm gonna cut out tops for our tarts. three that's okay okay so now you're just going to wet the edges of the bottom one so the top will stick to it press it down it's like a ravioli okay and this is gonna go right into oil and fry up doesn't take too long at all So the fair code of um, jousting was actually credited, fair code meaning, you know, it was a gentleman's sport, not a barbaric sport, was actually credited with the uh, Knights of the Round Table and King Arthur, which is very interesting. Okay, I'm gonna do one more, I'll do three for you. In the uh, 16th century, it kind of, jousting became obsolete because the introduction of firearms and gunpowder and all that kind of took over the uh, art of warfare in Europe. And then by the 17th century, it was kind of gone. America is the one that's actually held on to the tradition more than anybody, and ironically, we never had it to begin with. Okay, so I have three and I have hot oil, so I'm just gonna drop them in. Shouldn't take longer than a minute or two. Just want the dough to cook. The, the filling's obviously already cooked. It's just fruit and spices. Just want to be brown and crispy. And puff up a little bit. Make sure your edges are tightly sealed because you don't want the filling to fall out while they're browning either. We'll just place them directly on the cutting board. Ideally, you'd want to put them on a paper towel or a rack to drain the oil. Looks good. See? Pig tart. Okay, I'm gonna finish the rest of my tarts, clean up the area, and when we come back, we'll have all three dishes plated. Okay, we're back, and we have all three dishes plated, or almost plated. We're gonna finish off the radishes. Like I said earlier, we're gonna use the radish greens, so I'm gonna chop those. I don't need all of them. Take a few. Okay. We're gonna chop them chef and odd style. Just lay the leaves on top of one another and roll them and then just slice them thinly like so. So it looks pretty on the top. Just like that. That's our garnish. We made our brown butter sauce earlier. Just drizzle that over top. That'll be really good. And then sprinkle your radish greens. And there you go, folks. We have our roasted radishes and the brown butter sauce. Next, we have our fig tarts that I brushed with a little bit of honey as if they weren't sweet enough. And here is our finished pork pie. You can see all of the currants and the dates and the ground pork and the flaky brown crust. Thank you for joining me on this chapter of the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. I'll see you next time.